Hey everyone, it's Ryan with SpiceWorks. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We have another SpiceWorks Partner webinar today, Disaster Recovery Can't Be This Easy, brought to you by Zerto. I hope everyone takes a second to check out the question box on your screen. Please submit questions. Our presenters want to answer them. It's a great chance to get insight from pros. Uh, if for whatever reason your answer can't be uh, addressed, you will get a follow-up uh, email from Zerto. They'll get the chance to give that to you. Another thing to note is that you will get a recording of this webinar, so if you step out for any reason, uh, it's no cause for concern. You'll get that recording tomorrow. Uh, that's basically all I have, so now I will introduce our presenters. We have Zach Dickinson, and he is a, a Zerto customer, and he is a senior network administrator. We also have Jennifer Gill, uh, Zerto's director of product marketing, and we also have Shannon Snowden, who is going to hang around to answer any uh, technical questions at the end, and he is a Zerto senior technical marketing architect. So Jennifer is going to start us off whenever you're ready. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so today we're going to talk about our disaster recovery in our very, very simple solution, uh, Zerto Virtual Replication. So before we move on for the first, from the first slide, I do like to point out our awards. So you can see that we got Best of Show at VMworld in 2011. And the reason why I like to highlight that one in particular is because we had only been uh, in the market for about two weeks. And that really showcased that the market was ready for this type of technology and there was a clear need. So in just a couple of slides, I'm going to turn it over to Zach because I know that you would rather hear from a customer who's using the product than the director of product marketing. So he's going to talk about his organization, uh, Rapid Parts, and look at why they virtualize his environment and the challenges he saw with business continuity and what made him select Zerto. And then after, Zerto tells, after Zach tells his story, um, I'll give an overview of Zerto. We'll look at the architecture and get into a few more details. So Zach is the technical lead for um, many things at Rapid Parts. You can see he led a global initiative for their e-commerce sites. So Rapid Parts does quite a bit of business online through the, you know, as many businesses do today, and he led that initiative. He was the project lead for business impact analysis in relation to business continuity. So he looked at overall what did they need to have at Rapid Parts to ensure that they would be able to continue to serve his customers. And he's the virtualization lead across the global infrastructure. All right, Zach, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, Jennifer. Uh, again, uh, Zach Dickinson, I uh, work for a company called Rapid Parts. Uh, a little bit about us. Uh, we were established in uh, 1986. Uh, we are a business built on innovation um, and uh, technology. Uh, we, our warehouse, uh, we like to say, is uh, state-of-the-art. Um, and uh, we've developed and maintained internal um, and external uh, websites. Uh, the actual Rapid Parts company is only about 100 employees, but the infrastructure that we have uh, built up is quite a bit more extensive um, than would normally warrant for 100 employees because we do support uh, e-commerce site for our parent company and our parent's parent company. Uh, we have about 33,000 individual part numbers, and uh, 7,500 shipments uh, leave our warehouse monthly to North and South America. And as of uh, this year, that's actually global. Uh, our e-commerce sites now reach out to Europe, Asia, and Australia. Now, why did we decide to virtualize? Uh, we wanted to simplify the management of our 125 server environment. Uh, we needed to beat, uh, meet uh, business requirements. Um, and again, creating a VM certainly is much easier than procuring physical hardware and uh, rolling that out. We also have a pretty dynamic environment um, that needs to meet uh, changing business needs. We have a, a great web development team and also a great SQL uh, development team. Uh, but anybody on the infrastructure will probably know uh, that their uh, needs can change uh, as, you know, quite quickly, and uh, virtualization uh, definitely helped us there. Uh, they could you know, ask for more uh, um, um, space for uh, storage. Uh, they could ask for more uh, memory, more uh, CPU as they needed it. Uh, we are 95% uh, virtualized uh, at the moment. That 5% is just a couple of servers that really don't make sense to virtualize, like fax servers and a couple of uh, domain controllers. 
we currently have two sites. Uh, one is production here in Grand Rapids. The second one is in uh, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, there are plans to um, kind of turn that DR into um, somewhat of a, of a warm location, actually have some production running there uh, in plans for future where we may run active active for our e-commerce sites. We're currently replicating 51 VMs through Zerto, um, which is about seven terabytes of data. Uh, the applications that we support are our business system, finance and warehousing, uh, e-commerce web servers, and SQL database servers. Uh, so your typical uh, Windows environment. Uh, our storage is an EMC VNX2 and production, and then in DR it's an EMC uh, CX4. Uh, you'll notice that we have disparate hardware there, and I'm sure that we'll hit on this later, but uh, Zerto is hardware uh, agnostic, which was uh, uh, really, really nice. So what are some of the challenges that we had um, in our previous um, business continuity and disaster um, recovery tools? Well, we used uh, VMware SRM uh, along with EMC's Recover Point, and for probably three to four years, it did a really nice job for us, but as our um, RTOs and RPOs began to shrink, we began to evaluate other, um, other types of, uh, uh, of solutions, and then also um, took another look at um, what we were currently doing. Um, if we did have an issue, we weren't sure which support team to, to call. Um, was it a problem with our SRM orchestration piece, or was it a problem with our recover point uh, replication piece? It also required matching storage arrays, which basically locked us into not only EMC, but a certain line of EMC product. Um, and uh, we weren't um, fully able to leverage the EMC recover point uh, um, capabilities because of some limitations in SRM and vice versa. Uh, it was quite complex. Um, this is uh, just one example of a story uh, that happened. Uh, we wanted to leverage just one new feature that was in VMware vSphere. And because of that, we ended up having to do four component upgrades. We had to upgrade vSphere, which meant we had to upgrade uh, Site Recovery Manager, which also meant we needed to upgrade the actual recover point devices. And in order to support that, we had to upgrade the, um, the flare code on our, um, on our SAN. And that was four um, pretty uh, impactful upgrades just to get one, um, one feature that we wanted in VMware vSphere. Um, maintenance and operational costs were significantly increasing. Um, as we increased um, the data that we were replicating and the more servers we replicated, it just became exponentially harder to um, support the, the solution that we, that we had. Um, we also um, noted that application consistency was challenging. Um, we really, especially for our SQL servers, we wanted not crash consistent data, but application consistent data to be down at our DR location. And for the first probably two to three years, um, that wasn't ca um, uh, really capable at all using Recover Point and SRM. Towards the end of the life cycle, they did add it, um, but uh, it seemed very difficult um, to, to, to leverage those application consistent checkpoints. So why did we buy Zerto? Um, they're very aggressive uh, service levels. Um, hardware agnostic, we can replicate from anything uh, to anything. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at doing is uh, taking uh, the VNX2 in production. That's great, that's solid tech. Uh, EMC's been around for a long time. The VNX2 line has been around for a few years. But because we can now replicate to any hardware down in DR, we're looking at some newer technologies that we wouldn't necessarily be comfortable with putting um, into production, but they certainly could live down in DR and prove themselves over a couple of years. So there are a lot of um, soft benefits to Zerto along with all of the ones that um, uh, you, you know, you're going to realize right away. Um, the failover is uh, very flexible and it has a journal. You can select a point in time and failover and you can even roll back and choose another point in time um, if you want to. So for instance, um, if I needed to do a failover and I say I know my data was uh, uh, consistent at 11 a.m., I can fail that machine over, power it on, take a look at it. If I find that I don't like the way that it has failed over, maybe, cra maybe, um, uh, maybe bad data, um, for whatever reason, you can actually roll back that failover and then pick another point in time and continue to do that until you're ready to go ahead and commit that. That, um, that feature was the, the main one that drove me towards Zerto. Um, and again, with other solutions, that wasn't possible without going through a very intense and uh, manual process. 
Uh, as mentioned before, this is now one complete product. You don't have SRM as your orchestration piece and then something else doing your replication. It does the replication and the orchestration uh, together. And then it's VMware aware, which makes it a much simpler to leverage new features. I don't have to do any of those four part uh, upgrades. It basically just works. It's also pretty simple to insert the VSS checkpoints. And we've been doing the VSS uh, checkpoints for SQL and Exchange. Uh, we've been a customer for about three or four months now. Um, thankfully, have not had to do an actual live failover, but uh, over those three or four months, we've been uh, very happy with the uh, continuous operation of it and also been very pleased with all of the test failovers um, that we've been able to do. And with that, uh, Jennifer, I'll go ahead and hand it back over to you for the rest of the presentation. Okay, great. Thanks, Zach. You hit on a lot of key points. My slides are going to make a going to really click together, I think. So one of the things that was really highlighted in Zach's story was how complex it is if you're using two tools. So if you have something for to handle the orchestration piece, like Site Recovery Manager, and then something else to handle the actual replication of the data, like Recover Point, you know, your BCDR process might look something like this in terms of planning. So you can see it's quite complex. There's a lot of coordination points. Each one of these steps is an opportunity for error, which is an opportunity for exposure. You have to take all the LUNs, uh, VMs rather, map them to a LUN, and create that you know, linkage. It becomes a lot more stiff. You don't get all the flexibility out of your virtualization uh, investment that you've made. So with Zerto, instead of having all of these complex steps, we actually simplify it down to just five key points. Because we're in the hypervisor and virtual aware, that's what we're replicating, the VM, the data that you care about. So you, to protect an application, you just locate the VMs that are part of that application. You'll configure that into a virtual protection group. We'll go into more detail in a couple of slides on what that is. You'll configure your application policies, what you need to see in terms of SLA, et cetera, and then that's it. Because Zerto is in the hypervisor, any changes or movements that are made with vMotion, HA, features like that within VMware, we're aware of those changes, and we recognize them and preserve them in your BCDR policies so that you don't have to then go back and update your BCDR policies. It's just aware. So as I mentioned, uh, Zerto Virtual Replication is virtual aware. So replicate VMs and VMDKs, exactly what you care about in your environment. It's a software-only solution, and this provides two main benefits. One is it installs seamlessly into your existing infrastructure. So when you think about your production applications, Zach mentioned SQL and Exchange, there was probably quite a bit of work into how those applications are going to look in the environment, what servers are the VMs going to reside on, what storage are they going to access. The problem is that, as we saw on the first slide I presented, once you come in and introduce BCDR, you have to change that all around. You have to map those VMs to, the, to a specific LUN that are part of all the same application. With Zerto, you don't need to do that. You've architected your application for performance. You can continue to keep it architected that way. The second key point for it being software only is it scales beautifully in the environment, and you'll see that in the architecture. There's not one bottleneck within the environment that handles the replication. There's a small appliance that scales. You install one on EGSX host, and that provides seamless scalability. And then Zach really hit on some of the enterprise class points that we talk about. So very aggressive service levels, RPOs in seconds, RTOs of minutes. The virtual protection group provides the application consistency, and we're able to take that one step further with the VSS checkpoints. And we also have a journal, which provides one hour up to five days' worth of historical data. And then you'll see that we've talked a lot about the data, but we also include automation, automated replication and recovery. So that entire process is automated as well. Again, any manual step in a process is an opportunity for error and exposure. So here we have an overview of our architecture, a very simple overview. And I say simple because here we have two sites, and we are able to protect multiple sites. So you'll see there are two components of the software, the Zerto Virtual Manager, and that's a plug-in right into vCenter Server. That is the only piece of software that you'll touch. 
That's where you'll configure your virtual protection groups. That's where you'll set up your DR policies. It also manages all the Zerto virtual replication appliances. There's one installed per ESX host, and this is what handles the replication. We've actually done benchmark testing here to measure the impact. Very, very low impact on the ESX host. It's like 2 to 5%. I've had many, many customers tell me they didn't even notice when they installed the virtual replication appliances. So in, as Zach mentioned, you can replicate from anything to anything. So you can try out that new storage array that maybe you don't want to put in production, but you, it sounds cool and you'd like to leverage it in the future. Or I have other customers who use older arrays. They're thinking, geez, I have to, I'd love to get this really nice hardware for my production data center, but I have to have matching. I can't afford both. They only need to buy one, use that older array that you have in production now, put it at your DR site, and you're able to extend the useful life of that hardware. So highly scalable. So I talked a little bit about that already, but you can see with each virtual replication appliance on each ESX host, you don't have this box that's sitting in the environment that's handling the replication. So when you have five hosts, yeah, that box is probably working okay. But when you get to eight, 10, 12 hosts as your environment grows, now that box is getting overloaded and there are issues with the replication. So how we are able to deliver our pills of seconds is we have continuous block level replication. We don't leverage snapshots. As the I.O. is created, we replicate it at the time of creation. So you don't hold them all back and then send them over the wire. They're constantly replicating the changes in the environment. So in the journal provides point in time recovery. So again, one hour up to five days worth of data. So this isn't just for failover in a disaster recovery situation, but it can also help you recover from logical failures or upgrades that maybe affected the environment. So say you upgraded the environment this morning at 10 a.m. and it, may, it disrupted the environment. It's just not the way it was before. Something's wrong. Instead of rolling back the whole upgrade and taking a day to do that, you can just fail over the environment back to 9 a.m., 9.59 and 43 seconds. And then lastly, we do put some optimization in there for the network, um, compression, throttling, things like that, to make sure that replication isn't dominating the environment. We are talking about production workloads that you're using to run your business. We need to make sure they get first say within access to the network. So the virtual protection group. So this is how we provide uh, application consistency. So many applications uh, in a virtual environment have several VMs associated with them. For example, a database VM, an application VM, and maybe a web VM. So you want to make sure that those are protected consistently. So you can take those virtual machines and put them all in one virtual protection group. And Zerto will say, okay, no matter where these VMs are in the environment, I need to make sure that they're protecting in exactly the same way. So you can use DRS, you can use vMotion, you can use those other things. Zerto will track the movement of those VMs and say, yep, it's still part of this application, though, so I need to handle it in a special way. Within the virtual protection group, you can set things up like boot order. So the database server will come up before the application server, and then lastly, the web server. You know, can also put in your RPO targets, you know, whatever it is, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, the length of the journal and also any re-IPing that needs to occur. So for example, when you fail over, you might want to re-IP those virtual machines to have different addresses at your DR site so you don't end up with network conflicts. Also, you can set up a separate network for DR testing. So, and also, as Zach mentioned, we're able to support VSS to give you not just crash consistent, but application consistent checkpoints. So when you do fail over, you know that the application is going to be available and recoverable. So that's really half of what we've talked about in terms of disaster recovery is the data. So we've talked about grouping the data, replicating the data, making sure it's configured properly so that we can then access the data. And we leverage automation for that access. So 100% virtual where all the information goes over to your target site. Something happens and you need to fail over. 
Zerto will automatically build those virtual machines on your replication site. And because we've set up the re-IPing, the boot order, all those other things, this takes just a few minutes. I have a customer who knows it's going to take him two minutes and 43 seconds to recover his SQL Server database because he's run his testing several times, and that's the average that it comes out to. The click to test anytime, so this is a really neat feature because it's in a bubble network. It's completely separate from your production environment. You can run a test anytime during the day. You don't need to come in at 2 a.m. on Saturday mornings, as some people I know do. Um, instead, you can click to test anytime. And this test can be executed during the day. It will not affect replication. Replication will continue. And in the off chance, that you do need to fail over while you're executing a disaster recovery test, you can stop the test and then do your actual failover. We also have an off-site cloning feature. So for example, instead of taking backups off of your production environment, what you can do is take a clone of your environment on the disaster recovery site separate from production that uh, application will then come out of management from Zerto. Zerto will no longer manage it. But now you can use it for test and development, backup. I mean, if you have the resources there available to you already, this is a great way to leverage those and get more value. Also, um, one thing I did mean to mention, um, Zach mentioned that he'd have a, perhaps a warm site in South Bend. Zerto does bi-directional replication, so you don't have to have, you know, replication doesn't go just A to B. It can go A to B and B to A back. And then lastly, I just want to mention that we do, uh, in terms of automation, we do have a flexible journal. So for example, end of month, end of quarter activities, um, you have a lot more I.O. And that could cause the journal to fill up faster, but you want to maintain that history. So if you want to maintain five days of data, maybe that required eight gigs normally, but now it's up to 10. Zerto will expand that journal quickly to make sure that we're maintaining the history that you've selected, and then as things calm down, it will slowly shrink the journal back and give that storage back to the business. So you can manage from anywhere. So you can see on the left-hand side there that we have a plugin right into vCenter. We also have a browser-based uh, interface. So great use case. One of our customers, um, their manager wanted to have access to reports to make sure that he could print off a report and give it to auditors to satisfy compliance requirements. But to get into Zerto through the vSphere plugin, you need to have vCenter credentials. And he was a little concerned that his manager might go in and start doing things that could affect you know, the applications in the environment. So with the browser-based version, he just gives him a link. He can go into Zerto. You know, he's limited in the terms of damage he can do, and he can run a report anytime he wants. So as I mentioned, we have multi-site replication. We've talked a lot about kind of data center A to B. So this is similar to Zach's environment. But we also support uh, multiple sites. We support replication from several sites to one shared infrastructure delivering a multi-tenant solution. This helps save on costs because you don't have to have a separate infrastructure for each um, destination or location that's replicating in. And we also support replication to cloud providers. We have many cloud providers that offer disaster recovery services. I mentioned our reports. So the audit reports are probably the most popular. This details each step in the recovery process. So again, you'll know it takes two minutes and 43 seconds to recover your SQL database. This also helps satisfy audit requirements. Um, the resource reports are also great because they look at consumption not just at the target site, but at the source and the target site. So you can look at uh, overall storage requirements, overall processing requirements, and overall network requirements to help you plan for additional resources that you might need. So we've talked a lot about private cloud disaster recovery between two sites, but as I mentioned, we also work with cloud providers to offer disaster recovery as a service. This is a great way to kind of evaluate a cloud provider and see if you'd like to work with them. Once you become comfortable, you can give them those applications that you do not like at all and let them manage the production and the disaster recovery environments. So 
So in closing, we really have a great approach to disaster recovery. It is very, very easy. Um, I hope that you saw that through the automation slides and things like that. I mean, some of our customers are just blown away by the simplicity. And I run the reference program as well, which is how I get to meet great customers like Zach. And the most common comment that I get in our um, surveys is, your product does your product does what you say it's going to do. So our marketing materials match our product capabilities, which is great for us and easy, makes things easier on us because we know that we're going to be able to deliver aggressive service levels. We know that we offer application level protection. We know we have a very simple automated solution. And as you saw, it's a great, if you want to keep everything in-house by thinking about cloud, you have that protection in terms of your investment. So, oops, this is the wrong closing slide. This is very embarrassing. Um, so my email's up there, Jennifer Gill and uh, Shannon Snowden, who's kind of lurking. Um, if anyone is interested in contacting Zach, you can email me, and I will put you in touch with Zach. If you email Rich, he will not know what you're talking about. Rich did our email yesterday, and somehow that slid past four editors. So I'm going to see if we have any questions. Oh, we have many. Many, many questions, which is great. So, uh, Shannon and Zach, are you available for a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Uh, Shannon, do you okay. want to pick one and answer it? And if I have anything to add, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Certainly. <clears throat> so, Jen, do you want to ask the questions, Jen? Um, sure. To everyone. Yeah, so I have an IBM standard primary site with two hosts and internal storage at the DR site, one host. Would it work with this setup? Absolutely. So we're being hardware agnostic. Um, whatever uh, inter in infrastructure you have, we work with. And as long as you have um, vSphere and uh, vCenter, at least one of the locations, then we're able to, uh, to uh, get you protected. And during our testing, before we moved away from SRM and uh, uh, Recover Point, we actually set something up similar to this where we just had a standalone host. It was in the same data center, but it was just a standalone host. And uh, we replicated locally just to do uh, some of our testing. So, yeah, so we had our shared uh, EMC SAN replicating to a standalone host in the same data center, but um, exactly like this, and, and it worked uh, worked well. Yeah, if you think of it, it uh, the data, as long as the uh, the uh, data store that's being presented to the cluster, uh, as long as the host can see it, as long as vCenter can see it, then we will work with it. We just see it as, as another uh, data store. Okay, great. And we have another question here. Does it work with non-Windows OS virtual machines? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, go, go ahead, Zach. Oh, well, I was actually going to say um, we are all Windows uh, right now, uh, but we were doing a migration of our business system, and we were uh, trying to tell whether or not we wanted to go with a Linux Red Hat, uh, uh, Red Hat 6, I believe, or um, Windows version of that. And uh, so we actually tested replicating the Linux machine. We were able to, you know, uh, replicate it. Uh, do the test failovers and uh, an actual live uh, test failover. Yeah, you have all the same functionality, such as uh, changing uh, IP address for the uh, for the virtual machine during the workflow, uh, the failover. As uh, as long as you run the VMware tools on the on the virtual machine, then you have all that functionality. In fact, you can even replicate um, virtual appliances if you want. For example, we have uh, the orchestrator appliance um, in our environment that uh, before we run uh, Windows security patches on our web servers, the orchestrator uh, goes through and takes snapshots of all the machines, the, um, the uh, uh, um, updates are installed, and then orchestrator goes through and removes those uh, snapshots the next day as long as there aren't any issue issues, and we wanted that orchestration to continue if we failed over into DR. So even that uh, virtual appliance, you can go ahead and replicate uh, replicate those. Yeah, that's because we're at the hypervisor layer. So uh, we're not uh, down in the hardware, and we're not up in the virtual machine. We're at the hypervisor. So we will perform and behave much like 
uh, the eSphere itself as far as functionality. Okay, there's a question. Is there a Zerto agent that needs to be installed in a Windows VM to make an application consistent checkpoint with VSS? Zach, you want to try that one? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, there is a uh, small installer that you down from, download from Zerto, hit a couple of uh, uh, next, and then uh, you're, uh, you're good to go. Uh, there's two ways that at least I personally inserted um, the uh, uh, VSS checkpoints. Uh, one is you can actually pull up a little GUI interface that they have and manually insert checkpoints. Uh, or you can do a Windows schedule task um, that just runs like a batch file that will go ahead and insert uh, them uh, really whatever time period you want. We do once an hour for our Exchange server, for instance. And there's some uh, really good documentation uh, regarding um, you know, the, the commands and the options that you can do uh, for that. Um, in fact, uh, Shannon, I don't know if it'd be interesting to talk about some of the commandlets that you have um, available too. You know, if you if you want, you can really uh, script a lot of this too. Is that is that right? Yeah, absolutely, using Power CLI. Uh, and on our portal, with our partner portal or customer portal, we have um, uh, really a whole library of um, functionality scripts for for just that uh, for just that purpose to make administrative work much easier. Uh, similarly to the VSS on Windows, I do want to mention that uh, if you have Linux machines that you need to have a uh, application consistent checkpoint, we work with those as well. So it's very similar to the to the agent you would put on the Windows guest. You would put a, a piece of code and just a little script on the Linux server, and then whatever quiz the uh, application on the Linux server, then we get an application consistent checkpoint from that. And again, that there's commandlets and there's examples of, of how to do it and how to implement it on uh, on our documentation. And I will say that the uh, support is excellent. Anytime I've had questions on how to do something, uh, either via email or if um, I just wasn't understanding, uh, call shortly afterwards, and I've always been helped out. That's something we uh, take a lot of pride in. Is our support team is very proactive. We want to uh, want this to be easy, and if there are questions, we want to make sure they're addressed. And uh, that's reflected in our new product, uh, in, the, in the newest versions, where we actually have a uh, little pop-up help. Uh, if, you're, if you're hovering over an item and you're not really sure what that does, it'll pop up and it'll tell you what it does. And then when you first log in to uh, the, uh, the management uh, interface, there's a pop-up that comes up, and if you're trying to do something like Parasite or deploy a VRA, there's actually a little little uh, help menu and video that shows you with screenshots how to do it. So it's uh, it's we're trying to make something that's historically been very difficult uh, much easier. Okay, Shannon, question for you. Is this viable without a SAN? We have all local storage and production, but we have some empty ESXi servers off-site connected via fiber with enough local storage to recreate all our VMs. Sure. Uh, as long as it's a data store that the uh, the host and vCenter can see, um, it's a data store to us. So we're not – that's the beauty of virtualization to begin with. You're virtualizing the hardware components. You're abstracting all that away from your virtual machines, and we, that's the world we play in. We're all, we're all virtual, too. So if it's a data store that those, to, those hosts can see, then we, you can certainly use that on both sides. There's no requirement for SAN. Okay. Um, here's a question. I can actually answer this one. So is there a demo showing how it's installed, configured, and replicated between a primary site and a DR site? So... If you go to our website, we have some Master of Disaster video series, and it looks at installation. And if you join Shannon and myself, um, we have a webinar on March 18th, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. That's also on our site. You can register for it, but we go through a full demo of the product and showcase that. And then... So Shannon, a question that we usually get. So can you compare upgrades on uh, Site Recovery Manager stored SRAs versus Zerto? And yeah, Zach, I don't know if you want to maybe – yeah, that's what yeah, I was, Zach, actually, you might talk about your experience. 
Um, sure. Um, is, so uh, four and a half years ago when we implemented uh, SRM and RecoverPoint, I had um, a um, an implementation engineer from EMC out to basically rack and stack uh, the RecoverPoint, get it on network, and then I had a remote uh, implementation engineer get RecoverPoint talking to each other, implemented, you know, talking to my arrays, and then we had another uh, more professional services that then kind of tied SRM in to, you know, all of that. And I would say that entire process took, you know, maybe two to three weeks. Um, and then with Zerto, um, I basically got access to the demo and I was replicated in VMs in probably an hour or two. Um, so as far as the implementation, it's really, you know, not even close. Uh, and as far as uh, upgrades, um, again, I listed the, the example there where if you wanted to upgrade RecoverPoint, you have to make sure that all the other pieces are going to be compatible, and there's a good chance um, that you're going to have to do at least one more upgrade, if not upgrade all of them. Uh, with uh, Zerto, um, uh, again, you update the, um, the, the two Zerto servers on the production and the recovery side, and then um, from uh, the Zerto interface, it's very easy to go ahead and just upgrade the, the virtual replication appliances that live on each host, um, and again, maybe, maybe half an hour um, to, to, to do the upgrades. Um, so yeah, I mean, implementation and upgrades, again, it's, um, you know, it's just exponentially easier with Zerto. Okay, uh, so question about licensing. So we have a perpetual license. It's by Protected Virtual Machine, and we have a starter package of 15 VMs with one-year premium maintenance, and that's just over $13,000. So it's right in that range. Now, one of the things that I thought was nice is you, you buy those for first 15, but then after that you could buy one more, seven more, 11. Is that is that right, Jennifer? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and the reason that we like that is with RecoverPoint, and again, this is just at the time. Certainly licensing may have changed, but it was, you know, do you want the 10 terabyte licensing or the 300 terabyte? And uh, the answer was kind of neither. So, it's, again, uh, shows off the flexibility of, of Zerto, not just from a software's perspective, but also for licensing. Great. I'm glad you could add that colorful feedback. Um, Zach, I think we have another question for you. Um, do you find Zerto WAN bandwidth efficient? Have you utilized the offline copy for the intern initial replication for large VMs? Um, so do I find it bandwidth efficient? And um, this is probably the first uh, negative thing that I do have to say about Zerto is it is less efficient than the recover point appliances. I do find that uh, more bandwidth um, is used. Uh, and, you know, there are certainly, um, you know, things that RecoverPoint and other replication, you know, softwares can do that, that Zerto can't. But when I, um, you know, weighed the fact that, um, you know, we would be using a little bit more bandwidth versus all the other awesome things it can do, it really wasn't a concern. Uh, it does do some, uh, you know, compression and deduplication, uh, but some of the other existing customers that I've talked to, they'll, they'll um, put some other WAN compression technology along with this if there really are bandwidth concerns, uh, maybe like a ri riverbed technology. Uh, but those seem to be larger organizations that were replicating maybe uh, in one example from their Boston location to their London location. So bandwidth was really a concern. Uh, for us, we're just going from Michigan to South Bend. Um, so again, it, it is, it is um, not as efficient, but certainly is sufficient, I guess I would say. Um, and then what was the second part of that uh, question? Oh, um, yeah, for large VMs. So actually, um, the way that it worked out um, for us was uh, really great. We already had um, our data replicated down there through SRM. Uh, so what I would do is I would do a test failover, and then I would grab those VMDKs that were now available um, to my hosts, and I would copy them over to uh, the storage where I was going to be replicating Zerto. Um, roll back that test failover once that copy was done, and then um, with Zerto, I would use those VMDKs as pre-seeds, and that uh, that worked great. Um, just for testing, I did a one terabyte uh, file server, and I think it took a little over a week just to replicate that, 
but once I preceded it um, using the process that I uh, just uh, talked about, uh, I believe it took a little over a day. So the preceding really works well. So sometimes just you know taking those VMDKs and putting them on a hard drive and you know getting them down to DR sneaker net style and using those as a as a precede might even work. But yeah, the preceding worked really well. Great, awesome. Um, so I asked, does this work only with VMware, or will it also work on Citrix Zen server? So we will be supporting um, hypervisors, we act, other hypervisors. We actually made that announcement in February. Um, at this time, we're unable to comment on what exactly that is, but we are we will be supporting hypervisors in the future. And you know, I'm sure if you were to look at the marketplace, you'd be able to pretty easily guess um, who those are. Um, so I don't want to speak to the hypervisor uh, specifically, but just in general with new features, we've only been a, a customer for, again, three or four months. Um, but when I've called into support or talked to my, my rep, um, I've already seen three or four features that I've requested become part of Zerto. So um, it certainly is nice that, you know, whoever you're talking to is usually one step away from the you know the engineers the developers creating the software and the people making decision of what um, uh, features should go in there so the the rate at which new features are being added has, has been impressive yeah Zach thanks for adding that that's actually part of our reference program so like when I interviewed Zach to get his information uh, for this presentation today you know that's one of the questions that we ask is you know what improvements would you make to the product what new features do you want to see and that information goes right back to the director of product management. So we, you know, we want to make our customers happy. We want to make sure that we're delivering new features that you need, and also to meet market requirements. So glad, I'm glad you could say that. Let's see, I, I'll give another minute. To see if there are any other questions. But right now, it looks like we've answered them all. All right. So, so I guess. Uh, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry about that, Jennifer. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. So I guess I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. If you do have any questions, certainly you can go to our website, or you can email uh, myself or Shannon if you want to uh, get in touch with Zach. Just let me know. I can try to make that happen for you. So, oops, we did have a question sneak. Oh. Yep. Yeah, so the we, yep, we have I, some time. We can address that. Yep, no, so I just actually answered the Citrix question. So we are adding another hypervisor in the future. Um, and if you look at our press release in February, that has the detail there. So I think that's it, Ryan. I just, again, thank you so much, Zach. Thank you, Shannon, for joining me today. And Ryan, I'll turn it over to you. All right, well, I just want to thank our attendees. Uh, thanks for coming out. And we uh, had a lot of questions, so thanks for the engagement. And I just want to thank all our presenters, and it's especially cool that uh, Zach came out because we don't, we don't see customers come out too often. So uh, that sort of speaks to Zerto. And again, you'll get uh, a recording to this webinar tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. I hope everyone has a great afternoon, and enjoy your day.